what I really try and do with the kids is I try and give them the opportunity to be historians. So as much as possible, um, I give them primary source material um, where they can not just be told about what's happened in the past, but where they can really discover what the past was like and sort of come up with their own version of events based on actual historical evidence. So in terms of the kinds of projects that I do, I like to start out uh, the grade 10 course with um, having the kids um, being assigned a role and the role is they are an immigrant coming to Ontario from somewhere in the UK or perhaps from the United States and they have to in the end write a series of letters back home to a family member. They have to go through a series of primary sources so that they are not just making things up. So they have to look at primary documents that deal with the journey from often the UK to Canada, and these were called coffin ships because they were such horrible places to live. Um, they look at um, actual letters written by settlers to their family members in England, and I actually have uh, one from my husband's family that I like to show the kids. I like to get the kids to look at the oldest surviving film of Vancouver, which was filmed in 1907 by a man named William Harbeck, and it's a great black and white film that um, has the camera set on a trolley car, and it goes around downtown Vancouver and have to think about hmm what's stayed the same and what's changed since this time and looking at that film along with doing some research using other primary documents they can begin to build a picture of what the city was like. One of the ways that I would incorporate critical thinking is the entire Canadian Confederation project. They need to think about what other sort of colony groups have said about the idea of confederation and the kind of country they want to join and then they themselves have to decide if that works with their beliefs, morals, values, and in turn, if they're in agreement. Critical thinking also involves taking a look at a set of historical characters and deciding which one is sort of most representative of a particular group at a certain time. If you looked at the reasons why an event happened, which would be the most important reason and why, based on a set of criteria. And every day I make them think about the information and not just regurgitate facts, but to be critical about it. And then when they can, they're conversant in the past and they care passionately about what they're learning because they've given it some thought. I mean, I teach history because I love it. I think it's incredibly fascinating and interesting. And I really, really, really want my students to love it too. And what I found is when you get kids working collaboratively in groups, looking at primary documents, having discussions about the past, being critical about what they've read, um, debating you know, why things happen or why they should have happened a different way but didn't, or all these kinds of things. That's what I love. I think as a teacher, the best thing that we can do is to be mindful of the expertise that surrounds us. And so I, because I live in Vancouver, I'm fortunate to have access to some really great people who work for the Critical Thinking Consortium and the Historical Thinking Project. And I have some amazing colleagues and, and I don't think you can, you can win an award for teaching history on your own.